G'day ZKD here. One of my favorite things in Path of Exile's patch 1.2 Forsaken Masters is the new master crafting. It adds a huge amount of depth to the crafting system and uh, like allows you to leverage loot that could have possibly been good but something wasn't exalt worthy but just wasn't quite usable. For example, boots without movement speed or life but have movement speed or a bow that doesn't have a flat physical damage roll. There's a lot that you can do with this system. But it also allows you uh, a really nice way to craft end game weapons and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to craft an end game bow using this system in a fairly cheap way. So this system's not going to craft you an amazing end game bow like high level maps bow that you would, you know, craft with exalts and that, but that's not the purpose. This is designed to craft your weapon to get started on endgame. Just recently I used the system and got incredibly unlucky with the rolls, so we're going to hopefully recraft this bow just today and get something a little bit better. But even when I got really unlucky with the rolls, this is still a decent crit bow, and I've been able to use this to farm low level maps and Lunaris runs quite effectively. So uh, this system essentially is going to get you that stepping stone, stepping stone endgame bow, and you can use this with any two-handed weapon or any physical weapon. You probably even use it with one-handed weapons as well. That would be a little bit harder. So the general process is going to be to use a combination of vendor recipes, normal currency crafting, and the master crafting to, as cheaply as possible, create this decent damage bow. So the first step is to try and get a percentage increase physical damage roll. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this vendor recipe here that uses a rustic sash, a blacksmith whetstones, and then your bow to be able to craft this. So goodbye previous bow rolls because you were terrible. We're going to uh, try this again. So what happens is we're trading a bow. Fuck, I need to, uh, I need to remove the cosmetic effect. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> going to trade a bow with a rare rustic sash and a blacksmith whetstone. And we got, oh my, oh wow, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Okay. That is the top, that is the very top increased physical damage roll that is possible using a rare rustic sash. So you can see that this is not like, you know, uh, this is not over 100% or anything like that, but this is a decent amount when you roll it with a flat fizz damage uh, to be able to uh, create, you know, a decent damage bow. So it's enough to get started and uh, can be quite effective. Now, right here, I got 89%, which I'm pretty hyped about. I wasn't expecting that. Generally, uh, I have been getting like the 80s and in the 70s. Now, what happens if that does happen? So let's pretend this wasn't 89. What you can do then is just trade it with a white rustic sash. It'll, it'll give you a low roll, but what this does is it resets the recipe. Then you can use this same rustic sash instead. So let's say I re-roll that. Last time I, let's say I, last time I got 80 instead, I got 80%. We want as high as possible. I, uh, I settled for 88 last time. We are uh, then, so we trade the white recipe, then we switch back over to the same rare belt, and then, oh, this time we got 89%. Oh, who'd have thought? Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so now I'm going to trade this. Now keep in mind that this will mess up your implicit so uh, I have 42% crit strike chance, not the highest, but also not the lowest. So it'll be interesting to see what we actually get back. I think I think it only changes after you get it. It doesn't say which one it is there. I don't know, we'll see. Or maybe I rolled the exact same implicit, we'll see. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that was not expected. It equipped my bow, I thought I vended it. <laughs> I thought I screwed something up in the recipe. Wow. <laughs> Major panic attack for a second there. This was not supposed to be a comedy video. This was supposed to be an educational video. Oh, man. I... <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is supposed to be an educational video. <laughs> That's one for the blooper reels. <laughs> All right, oh, so if you have an empty slot, weapon slot, it will automatically equip it and you will panic. Oh man, that scared me. Okay, anyway, back to the educational focus of the video. But uh, hopefully you guys have found this entertaining at least. We're going to be using an Orb of Augmentation next to roll the second epic. So, so far this costed all of one Blacksmith Whetstone and a Rustic Sash. So you just use whatever crappy rare Rustic Sash you want. The eye level of the Rustic Sash does not matter, just as long as it's rare. So, very cheap so far, one Blacksmith Whetstone. Next up we have an Augment. These guys aren't worth much, so let's do it. Now, we, we, we pray to RNGesus here that we get something nice. We want crit or attack speed, and you can see what is available by... Uh, I'll put this in the description below, but there is the mods compendium here. 
So we have uh, IPD, which is uh, increased physical damage, local physical damage here. So once with a magic item, you can have one prefix and one suffix. So next up, we can only get something from the suffixes. There's quite a few bad things that we can get. There's some average things like resistances, but uh, we could get attack speed is like really good. Uh, and then crit chance is even better. So those are my two favorite ones. Crit chance multi uh, weapon, uh, sorry, crit chance multiplier is uh, also quite good. So there's a few, there's a few decent ones there. Uh, but mostly they're mostly the average, so we'll we'll see what we get. Augmentation, go. Twenty-five dexterity. We got we got one of the worst possible ones, but I'm still probably going to continue with this one, uh, just for the purposes of this video. However, what you can actually do is if you have another rare rustic sash and you really want to try for that better suffix, so if you want to craft as best as possible, I'm not going to go too ham on this because. Uh, I, uh, mm, it's, it's not a bad decision to do that, actually. It's not a bad decision to do that, but to get, actually get the 89% IPD again might take a little bit of a while. So you can make a decision at this point. Do you want to use the belt recipe again to just go for the high IPD, which you, know, might, you could, should be able to get it again after a little bit, and it won't actually cost you that much to do. And then you can roll the augments, because the next step is going to be to regal the item and, and then, then craft it at the master bench. So we're investing a little bit more from this point on. Before this point is the low investment. So I might actually pause the video for a moment and I might uh, obtain myself another rare rustic sash so I can try this again and we'll uh, we'll see if we can get a better suffix. Okay, so let's go through this process again. Hopefully you guys find this sort of this sort of thing interesting. I really love this new crafting system. It feels it feels just a great way to uh sort of uh, enable self-found, but also just a way of you crafting your own weapons, and this can be potentially cheaper than what's available in the shops as well, though later in a league you might be able to buy things pretty cheaply that are better than this, but especially early in the league this can be pretty good. So we got the 82% IPD, which is not great, uh, it's not not terrible, but I think we could probably go for a little bit better. So I'll, I'll do this example again now. So we go we go for we vendor it with a blue or a white version. We get our bow back. This will change the implicit again. We got 45, which is a better roll, but we have, obviously we're going to need to re-roll it again. So what we'll do is we trade the bow with the rare this time. Or we only want to trade it with one of those dudes, and we got 85. Now 85, I think. Uh, is a decent settle point. I'm happy to settle for anywhere between 85 and 89 on this, just because it takes a long time to do otherwise. And, uh, mm, yeah, I might run out of Rustic Sashes. I might run out of Rustic Sashes. So, I think on this one, I'll augment. If I get something good, I'll keep it. Otherwise, I'll re-roll again. Re again. And this costs, you know, basically nothing. This is, like, either Chaos Recipe, or you can even just, like, if you have some people that have some low-level Rustic, rare Rustic Sashes that have dropped, you can uh, actually just use those as well. <sighs> <laughs> it equipped the item again. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. We got five mana gained on kill. This actually isn't too bad because I'm having a little bit of mana problems. Nothing too significant. Five mana gained on kill is actually uh, like reasonably helpful, but it's not that great. So I think I will source another rare rustic sash and we'll try again. Alrighty, running low on blacksmith whetstones. Uh-oh. So we'll try this one, see how this rare rolls. 80% is a bit low, so I'm just going to trade it with a white one and we'll see what we get this time. There's the rare, there's the next blacksmith, there's another 80%, so unlucky this time. We'll trade it with another white one to reset the recipe once again. And then we're going to try it one small time here. 86, oh good, okay, this is going to be the magic one. This is going to be the magic one, guys, I believe. I need you guys to focus your, focus your RNG, even though this is in the future, but focus it for me. Oh, yes, yes, crit multi, good. That is probably, um, I think I rate the order probably crit chance, crit multi, attack speed for my build, but it could be different depending on your build. But, uh, so that's good for me, that's good for me, I'm very happy with that. So now we're gonna regal it, now we're gonna regal it. We're, we're moving on finally, guys, we're moving on. Gonna rock this regal org just here, and what we're hoping for is, uh, we actually now can get any of the prefixes and suffixes that we don't already have. So we have crit multi, and we have IPD. Now, ideally, we would get a high flat physical damage roll, and then we won't use the master crafting at all, really. Or you can use the master crafting to add something else. But uh, it could be good if we get attack speed. It could be good if we got crit chance. Crit chance would be really nice, actually. Uh, we could get a hybrid physical damage roll, or we could get, like, you know, some cold damage or resistance or something like that. There's a lot of bad things we could get, but there are some really good things we can get. Now, regals, I think uh, it's definitely worth doing the regal for this. At this point, you can just use the master crafting if you want. But I like the idea of using the Regal to turn it into a rare first, and then use the Master Crafting as a backup if the Regal doesn't pay out. So this is just the method I've chosen to take, and uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, wow, that is terrible! 
Oh, that's probably the worst thing that could have rolled. Oh, man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ah, oh, sometimes Iron Jesus is not happy with you and he does this. So what just happened there was we rolled the fizz damage, the flat fizz damage, which now stops us from rolling the flat fizz damage on the vent on the uh, master crafting. So if we got a high fizz damage roll, that would have been amazing, but we got the lowest of the lowest fizz damage rolls possible. I think that is as low as it goes basically. So that stops us from getting the, you know, the t the 13 to 20 roll or the 10 to 17 roll that would have made this a good bow. Now the damage is less than what my previous bow was, despite the uh, IPD and the crit strike multi, so I'm probably going to have to recraft this. So, let's go get some more currency to recraft this one. Either way, it's still been reasonably cheap so far to craft this bow, and uh, it's also been a fun process, and uh, that's probably like, the chances of that were pretty low. I think we got a bit, little bit unlucky on that one. Okay, we're back. Let's try this process again. So I have my rare bow. We have this dude here. Let's try it. We got the 86% on the first go. Oh yes, I uh, I got the rare belts for the the white belts for nothing. It's okay. They only cost me a few scrolls, and I'm sure they'll come in handy again. So at the end of this, I'll go through an alternative method for doing the uh, initial damage roll as well, because there's another way that I think would be better for like your higher, like your more end game bow, which I'll talk about soon. But uh, anyway, let's augment this dude and see what we get. I'm probably just going to go ahead with whatever we get now, just to show you guys the end of the recipe, rather than drawing this video out forever. We got four life gain per hit, that's fine, I'm just going to continue on for now. Rip Regal Org, let's see what we get. We got four, we got 11 life gain on kill. Wow, those... <laughs> Those are actually pretty bad. Those are actually pretty bad. But screw it. Let's pretend we got. Let's pretend we got crit chance and attack speed, shall we? And uh, now I'm gonna put this dude in here, and we get our flat physical damage roll of here. And this only costs just one chaos. So the total price, uh, assuming you don't get absolutely scammed on the RNG like me, because uh, generally what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the. You're going to roll the Rustic Sash recipe, you're going to augment it, and if it's no good, you'll re-roll the Rustic Sash recipe. Only regal it once you get something you're satisfied with. And then if the regal doesn't roll well, it actually doesn't matter at all. You're still going to get a usable bow. So the most you're going to spend is a regal and a chaos, unless you kind of want to re-roll after the regal for whatever reason, because you get the flat physical damage with the turbo roll, for example. But let's craft this ju just here anyway, and we'll see what we get on the actual flat rolls there. We got 13 to 18, which is not as which is actually uh, not not too bad. We got the high end of the bottom roll, and we got a mid of the uh, top end. So we did just okay there. And then the uh, the total damage is 97 to 220, which is actually a bit higher than what my previous bow was. Uh, although we lost resistant and cold, so this bow ended up you know eh compared to the last one. But uh, we had potential, and uh, you guys hopefully learned about a bit about this process. Now, the alternative method for doing this is, let me just go into my crafting tab here, is to use the granite flask recipe. Now, I believe this is an augment, a granite flask, and a bow. We go to the vendor. I'm not gonna, actually not going to sell this, but this gives a flat physical damage roll. Now, that's terrible, right? But you can actually do this over and over again using more granite. So once you get, I think it's five or six granites together, you can keep bumping up the physical damage over and over again. Then what you're going to do is the same deal, you'll augment it, and then once you have Tora at a high level, hopefully level 8, you will use her highest percent IPD, or increased physical damage roll, to give you a really solid bow, because getting that high flat fizz is harder, and uh, getting, but you can get that really good IPD off her once she is leveled up, so that's why this is like a more end game choice, because you need to level up Tora first. I've only got four, level 4 Tora, which gives us uh, the, the possibility of getting, I think the percent physical damage roll is like in the 80s or something, it's, no, it's like only 60%, so at this point, this is not worthwhile, but uh, later on, when she can roll over 100 or something, it becomes much more viable, so that's an alternative recipe or method of doing this, and uh, I think when you kind of look at this compared to like the the process of, you know, regling and exalting and everything, it's uh, it's a pretty pretty uh, cheap and decent way to craft a bow. Anyway, it's been uh, nice, uh, most of myself and a few of my other bow bros have been using this recipe to get ourselves our decent endgame bows before we find that really GG one. 85 IPD. <gasps> Crit multi. Accuracy light radius, yeah. Yeah, this is this is better. This is better. And we got the oh man, the implicit's terrible. But let's go for the flat the flat fizz. The flat fizz. Flat fizz is gonna be good. I feel it. I feel I'm feeling it. 
13 to 17. <laughs> oh no, that's actually okay. Okay, we got the we got the top of the low end rolls. Okay, okay guys, okay guys, little little extra bit at the end. I decided to recraft it because I just couldn't handle the last disappointment. And uh, we did much better this time around. I'm gonna have to get a blessed orb to re-roll that implicit, but uh, I'm uh, I'm a bit happy with this one. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.